Hi, I'm Perry from Cheese Plus and um, it's week four of your mystery cheese box and um, I'm just going to walk you through all the cheeses uh, of this week. Um, first of all, obviously if you haven't received your cheese yet and want it to be a surprise and open it at the um, dining room table, then um, don't watch the video, just pause it and come back later. But uh, we we begin to dig in and this time this week I won't uh, cut through all the paperwork by being too heavy handed. Pop this open. So yeah, first things first, uh, we have an addition in here which is some Tempa charcuterie but we'll go into that later. And then we have your cheese wrapping paper so if you uh, don't ma manage to finish it then you can actually um, uh, rewrap it. And then we've got some notes. So this is the, the new thing that actually we brought out. So for last week, we um, uh, we spoke a bit about helping British artisan cheese at the moment and how difficult it is. So we wanted to do something that you could perhaps keep, um, which is our slogan, which is um, eat more British cheese. Um, so we are just done, I ate more British cheese. And it has a little bit on the back about how important this is and how you've helped protect um, British heritage. Um, next one we have is all your cheeses, but I'll hide that from you. So you can go through some detailed tasting notes as you eat it, if you don't wanna watch my video. And then some cheese care notes as well, which uh, show you how to look after your cheeses. So without further ado, we will open up the first cheese which will be this one, which is uh, Sussex Brie. Um, so the Sussex Brie is made by Allsop and Walker. And um, Allsop and Walker um, took over a dairy in 2008 when a South African guy went, left the business. They took it over. And they started making amazing cheeses. Um, uh, a hard cheese called Mayfield, but this is their Sussex Brie. Now this is a really nice profile. As you can see, it's beginning to run. It was right next to the ice block to make sure that it all stays together. Um, but it's your traditional blip brie. As you can see, it's got that penicillium white bloom on it, which indicates that it's a brie. A little bit more is broken down on it, but the flavor is just really unctuous, very buttery cheese, um, full of flavor. And that's kind of the idea that we've gone for this week with this one. And then the next cheese that you have is one of my all-time favourites. I feel like I have an all-time favourite every week, but um, this is made by a really nice guy called Jamie um, from Montgomery down in Somerset. And he's like a traditional cheese maker. I think uh, his fourth generation, Jamie is, but he's like one of the nicest guys in the world. When I first went to World Cheese Awards on my first year, I um, turned up, I was meant to turn up at nine, I think I turned up at seven because I was so nervous. And the first person that came through the door was Jamie and he was just so nice and just made me feel so welcome like at the World Cheese Awards that I was quite nervous about. But this one I've been storing in my maturation rooms for about three months now. Um, and um, I was going through all the cheeses in my own maturing rooms, working out what we're gonna do this week, what is the best cheese I have this week. And I use a thing called a cheese iron, you bore into the cheese and you pull out a plug. And I had a look at it and it just looked perfect. And as I brought the cheese up to my nose, it just smelled so um, fresh and just like really intense smell. And then I went on to, to try the cheese and I think this might be the best Montgomery I've had so far. I was really, you know, excited. I showed other people it, you know, in yeah, at Cheese Plus. Got everyone down because I was so excited with the flavour and how it, how it was just so complete. It's got that like a uh, signature cheddar tang that's there, but then there's just a huge bundles of just like savouriness, and it's just like really like tons of kind of. Um, you know, different complex notes, but just all perfectly balanced. And I think it might be my favorite cheddar of the year, actually, like that I've tried so far. So really excited about this one, savor it, because who knows when the profile is gonna be like this again, but it's something really, really special. So the next cheese that we have is a traditional favorite. You've gotta have a traditional favorite on there. And this is made by Liner Dairies. I think probably most cheese fanatics will work out who makes this cheese or what cheese we're talking about, and this is the Cornish Yarg. Now, the first thing you know about Cornish Yarg, that it has a typical um, 
uh, nettle rind uh, so they get nettles wrap it in this and this is kind of like a lactic kefili style and it's made by um, Catherine Mead who is an OBE now I believe um, but she is just one of the most loveliest women that you'll ever meet and it's great to obviously get her cheese and support her on our cheese, mystery cheese box this week and it's got a really nice as you can see this kind of like crumbly core that it has so it's kind of like a kefili um, really Moorish, really light, mellow flavours, that lemony kind of tangs that you get with um, with uh, crumbly cheeses. And this is just like one of the favourites of the British kind of public. You know, when the Renaissance happened with British cheese, Yarg was at the forefront of it. So really happy to have on it. And the, the kind of, the, the style of this cheese is very different from all the others. So it kind of complements everything really well. And then we have another one, which one of their other cheeses featured a couple weeks ago on our mystery cheese board, which was Spark and Ho Red Leicester, um, known for its kind of red um, paste. And uh, this one here is Spark and Ho Blue. And once again, this has been in my maturation rooms for some time, bored into it, um, took a plug out, and it was just really, really nice. Like, so once again, the uh, orange paste is done by Anato, uh, which is um, a South African, uh, South American derivative of a plant. They put in the milk and make it very orangey. This has a light bl bluing through it. And I mean, it's just a really um, nice cheese to go with the rest of these. There's no bitterness in this whatsoever. The texture is slightly crumbly, but melts on the mouth beautifully. And it's just got such a huge abundance of savory as well so we're kind of going for a lactic savory kind of vibe on these boards but these will work really well together and then we have our first ever um, sheep's cheese so we've done goat and most of the time people are a little bit crazy and don't particularly like goats because they remember the the horrible stuff maybe that you get in the 1980s but this one here is um, Berkswell which like is once again a very famous blue, uh, f very famous um, uh, cheese in, uh, made in the UK. So this is kind of, as you can see, there's kind of spotting here, which is um, like the, the cheese um, has been ch matured for quite a long time. The, it's kind of like a, um, a pecorino, manchego, parmesan kind of thing going on. So it's really interesting because most people want creaminess in cheese, where the Burke's, well, is actually quite dry. So when you eat it, it kind of like, puckers your lips and it's a really nice kind of cheese to drink with because it makes you drink more so <laughs> so and if you need an excuse so um yeah sheep's milk lemony really hazelnut kind of flavors that are in here as well beautiful texture and if you're lucky you might get some really unique mold growths on here so you can see kind of this yellowish mold which is chrysosporium which is like a really good mold to have in your maturation rooms they're not gonna hurt you. These just make the cheese even better, you know. Um, if you're really lucky, you will get some, some red molding on here, which is popular in sheep's aged cheeses. Um, so yeah, all together, you just have, once again, a really nice board. I'm really positive about this one. I think I put it out on Instagram that I put these together on Tuesday, tasted them all, and I was like, that's kind of like the best standard I've had all these cheeses at the moment. So I really, really hope you enjoy them. Um, so last week I spoke about helping British artisan cheese. I briefly wanted to talk about another initiative that we're involved in at Cheese Plus, which is called the Academy of Cheese. And the Academy of Cheese is getting people um, to train within cheese, going from uh, level one to level four. Level four is the master of cheese. The, these uh, badges here, so that's level one and two. Two is the only one you can go up to at the moment, but Tracy, who uh, runs the academy, is working really hard on getting that up. And they're part of this massive initiative as well, which is happening in two weeks' time, which is uh, the British Cheese Weekender. So obviously, as I keep on saying, British cheese is in dire need of some help at the moment. And they're doing this British Cheese Weekender where you can see the best people that I know in the cheese industry. Um, Patrick McWigan is just awesome at talking about cheese. You've got Charlie Turnbull, who's doing his Tuesday Cheese Nights In, which you can catch on YouTube. He's doing a talk. Um, I'm doing one, so I'm gonna be revealing my mystery cheese board live, not pre-recorded, so um, that probably will go 
as good as maybe some of these videos do. Um, so um, it's gonna be a really good weekend and basically you can just go onto the Academy of Cheese, contact anyone who's involved and um, yeah, go Google search academyofcheese.com and uh, there pop up, get in contact, call any of us and we'll help you out and point you in the right direction. One, to buy British artisan cheese or take part in these events. Um, and I almost forgot as well, which I always do, which is uh, a free pack of biscuits as well. Um, I was going to briefly talk about Tempest Charcuterie as well, which you can get um, with the Mystery Cheese Box. You can add these on. And this is made by my friend Drew Baker, Master Chef, I think 2010, and his uh, partner, Tom, who uh, came runner-up. Drew won, he came second. That's always a bug of contention between them. But they make pretty much the best charcuterie in the UK, like hands down. Like, I mean, there's such a gap between uh, when I first met Drew, he was slicing off some of his King Peter ham, which is like a Parma style. And essentially he sliced it off, gave it to me immediately. And I was like, that's good enough to just sit on the international stage. Like finally British artisan charcuterie is here. And the difference with these is that they use traditional black pigs, which um, have kind of like, they're a bit endangered in the UK. I mean, Drew's getting them from prisons and things like that to, to find this herd and I mean the the flavors are just insane so you've got two year age pig um, Tom with his expert on fermenting these types of things Drew with his superb balance of um, spices and everything I mean fennel I've always hated it but they use fennel in such a way that carries the flavor and they're just phenomenal I mean what I might do while I'm opening I kind of will struggle probably to open this. I should have got this pre-ready once again, but I mean, you can just purely see the colors that are in there. Um, you know, these guys are facing the same challenges. It's not just about British artisan cheese. It's also about British producers um, and they're facing challenges as well. But I mean, if you take a look at those colors that are in there, this is spiced copper, I believe. And I mean, it's just, beautifully sliced and just absolutely perfect and tastes delicious. And alongside some amazing cheeses, you can have a bit of charcuterie as well, and it would be absolutely perfect um, for anyone to, to kind of have. So um, yeah, um, that's someone putting their uh, bins out next door that seems to be carrying, you know, um, whatever but anyway like these um charcuterie is amazing you can buy it on our website you can buy it from other places and um yeah um yeah i mean the pressures of recording and never doing anything like this and doing it outside so anyway you probably didn't hear that but there's someone putting their bins up anyway this stuff is amazing you know have a look at it on the website if you can, you know, uh, want to stretch out and put a little bit of extra charcuterie on there, you've got four different slices, different slices of salami, King Peter ham, which are um, like your Parma, and then you've got the copper, which is just phenomenal, and it's just amazing stuff. I mean, there is no better charcuterie that you ever have. So, um, yeah. Um, thanks for tuning in um, again and uh, any questions uh, once again I think I said last time I've got some really nice compliments about these boards and pictures and reviews and it's just been amazing to see one how many people appreciate British Arts and Cheese I mean we're doing more of these every every week and we keep on doing them until the problems resolved and we keep on doing them after because I've had loads of fun doing them so um, yeah, let me know how you get on. If you have any questions about the cheese, just drop me an email. I'm pretty much on my phone 24 seven at the moment, which my family hate, but that's okay. And um, yeah, just let me know how you get on. So enjoy and um, I'll speak to you next time.